Welcome to RM Prep USB Part 3B, Grub for DOS Continued. I'll just show you the Memtest 86 menu in case you missed it. So the next thing I want to do is uh, test this uh, rescue disk. It's a Macrium Reflect uh, ISO file which was made by Macrium. It boots to WinPE. But let's just uh, boot to Grub for DOS and get to the command console. Again, if we map that, press tab, it's as a CD, so it's device FF we use for a CD, it seems to be the most reliable. Unhook it, and we'll mount that device. And have a look in it. You can see that um, we've got uh, boot it's all in capitals, so it's it's obviously been done with the Rockridge extension. Um, uh, we've we've got um, Boot Manager here now. Boot Manager is is the main uh, bootloader file for WinPE, so we should be able to chain load straight to that file. So let's just try it. Just type boot, and I have actually tested that on a on a real system. Uh, it doesn't like QEMU much, but uh, if you test that on the real system, that does actually work. So let's add that into the menu. I'll press F4. And I'll just paste that in. Now the next thing I want to try is uh, a Linux ISO. And uh, I've got in here, just quit this, and boot to QEMU. And I've got a, an ISO file in here called XPUD, which is um, it's a Linux, but it's an ISO, it's a browser OS, so basically it just boots straight to a browser. So let's try the same trick with that. So we we'll map that as device FF, which is a CD. We'll hook it, and as it's a bootable CD, we should be able to chain load straight to it. And let's boot. And there we go, it's booted to the first section. Let's see if it boots all the way through. I'll press enter. And I'm just going to pause the video here because it takes a bit of a time to get through QEMU. And there it is, it's booted to the uh, Linux OS. And I could go onto the web here and browse the web from within QEMU since it's online, so the browser is working. So let's uh, add that to the menu entries. So here's our menu, and I've uh, added it in. You can see I've used if title so that I can delete the ISO if I want and that it won't appear in the menu. And uh, another way of, of uh, putting help into there, if you use slash n after the title, um, then whatever you put in will appear in the help text, which is at the bottom of the menu. So I'll demonstrate that. Um, there's the new menu, and if I go down there, you'll see at the bottom there it says XPUD is a browser OS. If you don't put any help text in, you get the normal standard um, grub for dos help text. If you just put slash n in the end of the end of the line, it won't give you any help text, it won't give you that message at the end. You can see with memtest86 I've actually got some help text in there, but not with the others. Okay. So I've just moved back to the uh, console again, bit to QEMU. The next thing I want to do is run the uh, redo backup uh, image that I say that I've got here. So we should be able to do that in the same way as we've done the others. And it's found it. It says the boot type is no emulation, so it should directly boot to the thing. So off we go, and it's actually started. So it looks encouraging. I'll pause the video here because it takes a little while. And you can hear, see here we've got some uh, splash screen coming up. If I press escape though, it'll show us the uh, console text and we can see what's going on. And you can see from this that it's having trouble loading. It can't seem to find uh, the, the root, the medium uh, that the file system is on. And in fact, this, no matter how long you leave this, this won't work. So what we have to do is um, actually mount that ISO file and uh, boot the files that are inside. And I'll show you the commands to do that. Let's just go back to the menu.lst file. 
is the menu file and I've pasted in the command that we need so here's the redo backup standard VGA mode and I put kernel on the end to show that we're actually booting the kernel rather than booting from the ISO um, the next line maps the ISO to the FF device but you can also see we've got um, an OR or a vertical bar, two vertical bars here which means OR so if that command fails then it will use minus minus mem and what that means is it will load that whole ISO into memory and the reason you use that is because this ISO file when it's directly mapped needs to be contiguous that means that all the clusters need to be contiguous one after the other um, if however the file is broken up on the on the USB drive then that map command will fail but if you use minus minus mem then the ISO file will be loaded into memory and it doesn't matter if the file is contiguous or not contiguous because once it's loaded into memory the file will be contiguous and you can carry on it does take quite a while for it to load up into memory though and of course you need a lot of memory to load the file up because the file's got to fit in memory so you can't load a 4 gigabyte file into a 2 gigabyte memory system so we hook the um, we hook the mapping and we set the root drive to be um, FF now we've got access directly to the ISO files so we can use the kernel command and we can tell it to lo load the VM Linux uh, file as the kernel and then there are some what's commonly called cheat codes which you can add so these these extra commands here are actually cheat codes and you can see it's telling it to use VGA mode 788 um, that it's booting boot, booted from the Casper folder and these will vary depending on what Linux you've got the most important thing is this cheat code here this cheat code is an ISO scan slash file name equals and that's the name of our ISO file so what will happen is that when Linux starts to boot as a, as initial initial boot loader initial RAM, RAM loader it will look for that uh, ISO file and um, it will get the files it needs it will mount that ISO file and, and get the files it needs out of it so let's try this now and see if it works so it didn't use the memory uh, that's just the um, Linux uh, RAM drive loading it's not the whole ISO now it's trying to load so I'll press escape to see what it's doing and there we go it's booted to uh, the ISO no problems I'll just quit that and we'll uh, do the next one so the next one to put on is PMagic and PMagic to save some time is similar to uh, redo backup um, you need to actually uh, mount the ISO and then uh, load the files as a kernel the only difference with this one is that I've got the uh, ISO file in this ISO folder so it's not in the root of the drive so I'll just show you the menu commands that we need to um, boot that file okay so this is our um, part of magic or pmagic ISO it's in the ISO folder here so you see I've had to use a map command and path it to the ISO folder the important thing here is to look at the cheat code again now again the cheat code has taken a different form because um, pretty much every version of Linux is different in their cheat codes and what, what, what cheat codes they use. In this case it's called ISO underscore file name and we have to um, specify the full path slash ISO slash pmagic. So let's just save that and try it. And for the sake of time I'll freeze the video here and uh, show it to you and boot it. Okay it took ages to boot but finally we're there it's fully booted now to uh, part in magic and for the last uh, ISO that I've got left is uh, LG Live now, LG Live is um, Linux Games I can show you the website here this is the Linux Gamers website and you can see here that uh, it says here do not use net, net unit booting it will not work so even unit booting will not work with this drive so here we have our standard uh, ISO mapping and uh, to cut a long story short this uh, menu didn't work so next I tried to uh, boot through the uh, through the kernel so I mapped the ISO file 
and tried to work out what the um, settings were for the kernel and the uh, initial RAM drive here and this didn't work either so the only thing left to do was to use part new now part new is uh, a command in Grepidos which will create a new partition entry in the partition table. Now a partition table in the master boot record has four entries for four primary partitions. We've created our USB drive with two partitions. There's a, the, the big one at the, at the beginning and then there's the dummy very small one is the second partition. So we've got two entries free in the partition table and the part new command makes a new partition in HD0 which is our boot drive uh, number three. Now since it's numbered from zero that's the fourth partition so the fourth partition entry the type number is zero so that means that um, there is actually is just the type is zero in the partition table so Windows and, and several other operating systems won't understand uh, zero it'll think that partition is empty however Linux doesn't. Linux will look at uh, each uh, partition the start of each partition in the partition table to see if it can identify what file system is in there and so what we've done is we've uh, looked what part new does is it takes the start address so the sector that that ISO file lives at will be set as the parameters of the start sector for the partition so the start sector will be set to somewhere in the middle of the disk the USB drive but it will actually be the first sector of this file and of course this file must be contiguous so again you need to run uh, WinContig which is uh, you can do with RM Prep USB. So then we use the map minus minus hook to map, to map this setting here and uh, root and chain loader and if we run this command it will be successful. In fact if you look at uh, the RM Prep USB website and look at tutorial 96 um, you'll see that you can use this part new uh, special trick to make almost any boot almost any Linux ISO without needing the special cheat codes or anything else and to make matters even better we can use this method and we can actually um, have a file called lglive underscore home so if we create using this uh, ext2 file system button if we create a, a file called lg underscore live underscore home sorry lg live underscore home on the USB drive and if we map that ext2 file system to hd02 which is the third entry in the partition table not only will this boot successfully but it will also recognize lg live home as a persistent ext2 file system and will write to that file just as if it was uh, an ext2 volume and so your files will be persistent so anything that you copy into LG Live Home uh, folder a file system will be persistent there's a lot more possibilities with grub for dos that I haven't gone into or even, even touched here um, it's a very clever and very interesting uh, bootloader to make your own multi-boot USB drives. Thanks for listening.